Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. First of all, first off, let me just apologize for the sound of the rain if you hear it cuz there is a tsunami going on outside my window at this current moment. But we're going to try to get past that because I have a fun video for you today. I don't normally do reaction videos, but I thought, you know, I've been on this kick lately talking about Demi Lovato and she recently came out with this new 4D channel or platform that she's trying to do. And I'm going to explain why in a second. And she had this interview with this guy, or I'm, I guess I'm not allowed to call him a guy, whatever, whatever it is. She had this interview with a non-binary person and she now has come out as non-binary and I wanted to do a reaction video of me watching this video for the first time because I saw a picture or like a little like meme or whatever from the interview and I was like whoa I need to talk about this let me make a video so before we get into the video let me just give you a little bit of background I'm going to read here from something I have up on my computer. I'm going to be sharing my screen so we can watch this together. I'm so excited. I can't wait. So as I stated before, Demi Lovato has now come out as non-binary. Now, if you uh, remember back in March, she was on the Joe Rogan show. And on that podcast, she came out and she said that she was pansexual. Um, and she said that she was part of the Alphabet Mafia and Proud whatever that means. Okay. Now, <sighs> Demi Lovato has been going through it the past year. Okay. Or two, as we all know, and I did a video about this, you know, she had a major overdose, almost died from it. Then she came out with this documentary called dancing with the devil, where she talked about that experience and, you know, like, I guess her growth going through it. Then she had this incident at a frozen yogurt shop where she flipped out about how the yogurt or the snacks or whatever it was in that shop was labeled. So that's kind of why I wanted to talk about this today, because I thought it was funny that she was making a big deal about labels on food um, in relation to it being upsetting to people who have had eating disorders like her. Um, but now she's coming out as non-binary and doesn't really want to be given a label. She now wants to be referred to as they, them. And it was like a really confusing post that she put up there because it didn't even really make sense to me. But at any rate, I grabbed onto the them. And so now we're going to refer to her instead of Demi Lovato, we're going to call her Themi Lovato because <laughs> that's what she wants to be known as. So anyways, she's got this podcast and I'm going to go over here to my YouTube so we can get started with this video really quick. But she's got this podcast called 4D. It's going to be something that she uploads a video or a podcast weekly, I believe on every Wednesday. I don't know who the guests are going to be on this um, podcast, but I'm assuming it's going to be around the premise of being non-binary or whatever her new thing is. I mean, let me just say this. I think Demi Lovato either suffered really bad brain damage from when she had her overdose and she had several strokes, she said, or she's just slowly like losing her mind. I mean, I think the girl is really, really lost. Um, you know, if you just look at pictures of her through the years, she was a beautiful, beautiful girl. I get that she grew up on the Disney Channel. You know, she went through the traumas of being a a, a young Hollywood actor, um, got taken advantage of, all this other stuff. Obviously, she had the drug issues, but she's so confused. And the more stuff I see from her, the more I'm starting to get really concerned. And when I made my last two videos about her, which I'll link below if you want to check them out, I mean, the Lovato people, her fans, they came after me in the comments. Okay. Like they did not like me talking about their queen. They didn't want me talking bad about her. They didn't want me saying anything about how I felt about her documentary. No, honey. They weren't having it. So they're not going to be very excited about this video because you know that I'm pretty raw about my reactions to things. And um, yeah, they're probably so if, if you're sensitive and you can't take honesty, just go ahead and click out now. Um, but if you want to watch this video with me and see my reaction to it, 
keep watching. So let's go ahead and start this video. Let me just go ahead and share my screen here. Share my audio. Okay, so you guys should see that there. So the guest that she has on this show is a person named Alok, Alok Vad Menon. I don't know who he is. I don't know why he's important. I think he's an artist or something like that. Um, but yeah, let's get started and see what he has to say. Living in the fourth dimension means existing consciously in both time and space. Okay, let me just stop there. What is the fourth dimension? Okay. <laughs> I, I get that she just said that it's living unconsciously in time and space, but we don't live in space and we operate by time and we're definitely not unconscious. At least I'm not. So I don't know what she's talking about with this 4D. Anyways, I'll just, I just wanted to throw that in there because that confused me right off the bat. But for me, it means having conversations that transcend the typical discourse. I want to take this moment to share something very personal with you. Over the past year and a half, I've been doing some healing and self-reflective work. And through this work, I've had the right. Okay, Demi, if it's personal, why are you sharing it? I mean, the whole thing about something being personal is you keep it close to the vest. You know what I mean? Like, you don't talk about it. You don't really share it. I mean, you might share it with, like, people that are close to you or whatever. But why, why are we putting it out here like this? And second of all, second of all. Was anybody just like waiting on this video? Like they were just waiting on her statement? No, I wasn't. I mean, it's great that she did this because it gave me content for my channel. But yeah, nobody cares which I, I'm not going to be. Let me not be mean. Let's just keep watching. I'm not even like two seconds in the video and I'm already being nasty. Calm down. Revelation that I identify as non-binary. With that said, I'll officially be changing my pronouns to they, them. I feel that this best represents the fluidity I feel in my gender. Okay. Y'all, I, I promise, you know how we do it. I'm not going to keep pausing this like every five seconds. But <sighs> why is it necessary to change your pronoun pronouns to they and them? Like, why can't I just call you by your name? Why, why, why do I have to adjust to the language that you feel comfortable with me speaking around you, I don't know, like that just confuses me. And then I got to sit here and like, think about how I'm going to talk about you or talk to you. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to change. I'm going to call it, She's a, she, I'm assuming she's got she parts. I mean, she's got a, a butch haircut now, but I mean, I'm like, I'm not going to change how I talk about you, Demi. Come on gender expression and allows me to feel most authentic and true to the person I both know I am and still am discovering. In this first episode, I'm excited to share with you what this means to me and what it may look like for other people. I want to make it clear that I'm still learning and coming into myself, and I don't claim to be an expert or a spokesperson. I know this might be a new conversation. She, she's saying that because she doesn't want people to come after her and say, well, my son decided that his pronouns are they and them or it or whatever the hell it is. And, and now he's confused and now he's depressed because he doesn't have the same support as you do, Demi Lovato. So I'm going to, you know, she's doing that to protect herself. So she's saying, I'm not responsible. This is just for me. You know, don't follow what I do. Just, I'm just letting you know. For many. So I'm inviting my friend Alok, someone I trust to spend time on this platform. Alok is an author, performer, and an oh, important Lord. voice within the non-binary community and beyond. Okay, he's an author and an artist and a voice in the non-binary community. Who knew that there was a community and Alok was the voice? Let's see what Alok looks like. Their work to create visibility, equality, and understanding has inspired me on my healing journey. We'll discuss identity at large, but also take the time to personally reflect on how I came into my truth so that we, like many others, are able to live our lives authentically. In just a minute, I'm going to share space with Alok and dive deeper into this conversation. More after this break. Hi, boo. Hi. <laughs> I am oh, hell no. <laughs> hell, what? That's Alok? That's the voice. Oh, Lord Jesus. 
All right. <sighs> so excited to have you on here. Everyone, this is my really good friend, Alok. And this is a topic that is something that is really important for me to discuss because I identify as non-binary. And it, when I think of people who know so much. I'm just telling you right now, this interview is 35 minutes long. There is no way in hell I'm going to do this whole video because Alok got me tripping with the eyelashes. I mean, sorry, with the eyeshadow. Um, and I can only stare at that for so long. So we'll get to, you know, a few of these topics and then, oh Lord. Much about this topic, I immediately think of you. I just want to start off by saying congratulations. And Thank you. I'm so proud of you. Thank and you. I want to remind you of the story of how we met. Our mutual friend, Sam, somehow convinced you to join them to come to my poetry show in LA. And I'll never forget because she was, she was probably high as a kite when Sam said, let's go to a Loke's poetry show. Your laughter like <laughs> punctuated everything. <laughs> totally. Like you were you were so emotional and evocative. And I loved it and I felt your presence. And I was like, who is this feisty person? <laughs> and then you came up to me afterwards and you said, Oh my gosh, is being non-binary when you are healed? And I remember being wait, what? <laughs> she came up to him, a loke. And said, is being non-binary when you're healed? What the fuck? All right. Being like so surprised because what I experienced in that moment was Demi really understands what I'm saying. And so often when I'm performing and when I'm speaking, it goes over people's head. They don't really get it. But it felt like with you, you resonated. First of all, I'm so grateful that I got to witness your talent in that show because that show changed a lot for me. You know, when I went into the studio with Sam, we had a uh, Sam Smith. Okay. So y'all, I didn't know it was going to be like this. Okay. First of all, the way that these people, and when I say these people, these fourth dimension types, talk to each other with the, I was so happy to share this space with you. And I felt your energy, like, come on. Like, it's like, they're trying to talk like they're wizards or something. You know what I mean? Like, what is that? What is that talk? What is that? Like, I notice people that are like these people are constantly speaking that way. And I don't understand that type of talk. Like, why can't we just talk like normal people? Hey, I was really glad to meet you. You know, you had a really good presence about you. You seem like a really nice person. Like, why do we got to talk about energy? And oh my gosh, I was so grateful. And I, I mean, grateful is not a bad word, but I don't know. I guess I'm just turned off by all the rainbow in this room. I mean, she's got a rainbow couch, a rainbow carpet, a rainbow box. She's got glitter on the wall. Alok is a hot mess, okay? Alok looks like like he fell into a box of, you know, uh, food coloring and drowned himself in it. I don't know. All right. Let's see if this gets any more interesting. And if it doesn't, I'm definitely going to go to Alok's uh, Instagram page because I checked that out before I started this video. And <laughs> y'all are in for a treat because if you think Alok looks crazy here, just wait. Just wait. They were telling me about how they were identifying as non-binary. And I was curious and asking questions, but they said, you know, why don't you come to this poetry show? One of my good friends is performing and we can, you know, talk about it there and, and after. And if you have questions, you can ask them. So I did. And you're right. I laughed at so much, but I also <laughs> was so viscerally like <laughs> there was a visceral like reaction in in me that was screaming this resonates with you and like i said demi lovato is lost okay she doesn't know who she is y'all she has grown up her entire life being formed into this persona that you see and that's that's what happens when you work in this industry you know, you, you, they mold you into, into a product. Okay. 
So I, I, I can respect the fact that, you know, like she's trying to get back to, to what she never got to do as a young child, which was find herself. But I just don't think this is the right way to go about it. And I just feel like when you don't properly guide your children, now granted, she's an adult, but when I watched her documentary, she had a really messed up childhood. Her parents were divorced. You know, her mom also had drug issues. When you don't properly guide your child, they go looking in, in, in bad places for that guidance. Okay. And they'll run into people like Loke here and, you know, overdue on the blue eyeshadow and the hair dye and It was the first time in so long that I've ever heard someone else speak my truth. And so how does someone else speak your truth, Demi? She just said it was the first time I heard someone else speak my truth right there off the bat tells you that she is still very lost because nobody else can speak your truth, but yourself. Okay. So she, she's basically saying she's looking at these people at, at a loke and in, in the group of people that, you know, she was in this room with and, um, she resonates with these people in some way because she feels like she's like them, which in one word to put it simply is lost. That's what it is. And then realize, Oh, that's my truth too. Whereas like in 2018, when I overdosed, I feel like the reason why that happened was because I was ignoring my truth and I was suppressing who I really am in order to please stylists or team members or this or that, or even fans that wanted me to be the sexy feminine pop star in the, in the leotard and look a certain way. You know, I thought that was what I was supposed to be. And now I just realize it's so much more important to live your truth than to ever suppress yourself because that's the type of stuff that happens when you do. I mean, I, I will say this. I agree that it is important to live your truth and to be who you um, who you were born to be, okay? But I will tell you this. God either made you a boy or a girl, okay? How you want to dress, how you want to identify, who you want to lay down in bed with is your business, okay? Okay. But this whole they, them, you know, don't refer to me in a specific gender is not the way to go about finding yourself because you're essentially saying that yourself is nobody, that you're like a blank, whatever somebody or you want to see yourself as. And that's just not the truth. So it's almost like saying, well, rather than define who I am to the world or at least put out who I am to the world, I'm going to put a rule on you that says you cannot define me. Okay. Now nobody defines me. Like as far as, you know, somebody who doesn't know me can't tell me who I am if you don't know me. Right. But what you can tell me is I'm clearly a woman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I, I am a mother. I mean, there's certain things that are factual about me and you can't just say, I'm going to like erase all of that. And I'm going to not put a label on me because I don't want you to put a label on me because I've been, I've, been, I've had labels on me all my life and I've been told how to be and what to do all my life. I respect that that's probably a really hard thing to deal with. Um, but you need to go to therapy to work through that and, and, and get to who you are, not completely erase your gender. You know what I mean? So let's keep watching my entire life growing up in Texas, I was disassociated. I was living someone else's idea of who I should be. I was so afraid of my own voice. I didn't allow any or audio or video recordings. There are so few photos of me growing up because I just wasn't comfortable with the boxes that people were putting me in. And I had so much shame. And I think that's a story for both of us is that when you have that kind of shame and that repression, it can almost kill you. And that was my experience growing up as a young non-binary person that everyone mistook as a boy and thought that I should be doing this because I was a boy. Everybody mistook him as a boy. Now, clearly right now he's not dressed as a boy would dress. Okay. But he's saying that when he was younger, people were mistaking him for a boy. I'm assuming based on the tone of his voice and his, the structure of his face, 
that he was born a male. Okay. So for him to say, you know, I was sick and tired of people putting me in this box and, 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 and conforming me to a certain identity. Like, so those people are wrong for that. When you were born a boy, I'm, I'm guessing a loke is middle Eastern, um, or maybe Hispanic. I I'm, I'm leaning more towards middle Eastern. Um, cause we're going to go to his Instagram page in a second. Um, but you know, just know that in that culture, not only do they not accept the way a loke looks now, but they definitely don't accept homosexuality. Now, I don't know if he's homosexual. I don't know if he's just a snappy dresser or what, but I mean, I'm sure that his family probably doesn't accept him the way he is. So let's keep watching. Boy, like my biggest dream when I was a child was to be a dancer. And then someone told me, you can't dance, only girls do that. And I remember being devastated and being like, what? Like, why is it that whenever I'm joyous, people tell me I can't be that? And now what I've learned is shame is joy interrupted. <gasps> and when I found out- Oh my, <laughs> look at her. She was like, oh, wow. Like it was just the most profound thing that she had ever heard in her life. Shame is joy interrupted. I mean, it's a snappy saying for sure. It's, it's a, it's a good saying. Um, but you know, the common denominator between all these types of people is they have some type of weird upbringing. You know, it sounds like they don't have support at home. Um, you know, so I think it's important sometimes, especially if you have young children that listen to people like Demi Lovato or Lil Nas X, which is another one that is quite confused, um, that you pay attention to this stuff because your kids are looking up to these people and, you know, copying and trying to emulate what they do and what they say or, you know, how they live their life. And they convince themselves that they also have this trauma that's going to justify this type of confusion and behavior. Now, again, I want to preface this by saying I really don't care individually how anybody dresses or looks or if you want to wear makeup or if you want to do whatever and you're a man and you want to be a woman. I don't care about that as long as it doesn't impede on my rights but I have a problem when you have a platform like Demi Lovato does and you're so careless to do something as little as just stating your opinion, even though you're saying, well, this is my opinion and I'm, you know, this is just how I do things. I'm not by any means a spokesperson. I get all that, but you have to understand that young kids are looking up to you and they're going to take this and they're going to follow what you do unless they have a parent at home that's, you know, watching everything and speaking to them about what they're watching. It is a danger. It's a slippery slope for people who have a platform to just put all of their business out there. I mean, she said this in the beginning that this was a very personal thing and that's great. Make it, keep it personal. Like don't put it out there. We didn't need to see a loke. Trust me. I didn't need to see a loke. I'm good. Not seeing a loke, but here he is. Uh, we're going to watch a little bit more of this and then I'm going to take you over to his Instagram Found out about being non-binary. And when I met other queer people, my lighthouses, as we like to talk about them for the first time, it felt like I was coming home to myself. <laughs> it was about hearing my voice and being like, that's my voice hearing my laugh and be like, that's my laugh. It was <laughs> like looking in the mirror and being like, this is what I've been waiting for my entire life. And so when people ask me what non-binary is, I can give you the definition. We are people who have existed for thousands of years who actually Look at Demi. experience ourselves outside of the idea of man or woman. What? But what I want you to understand. He's almost like painting him and, and those like him to almost be aliens. We've existed on this earth for thousands of years. Like what? Boy, bye. Okay, you know what? We're not gonna look at this anymore. We're gonna go over to Loke's Instagram. Oh, Lord Jesus. Okay, so here's his Instagram. This is his main picture. Um, let's see here. He's got a website or a link tree, but look 
at this, y'all. Look, this is what happens when you have no guidance in your life, okay? Okay, it says queerness is not just our identity. So I guess he's queer. I guess that's what he's saying. But look at this. Look at this, y'all. I posted this the other day. This is a hot mess, okay? <laughs> This is, look at, yep, see, he he's Southeast Asian or Indian or something like that. Oh my gosh, look at that. I don't know who this woman is, or if if that's a woman, who knows? Wow. <sighs> okay, first of all, oh, honey, what? Okay, Alok, I'm gonna need you to go to the grocery store and get a product called Nair. OK, if you're going to be rocking all these couture dresses, I need you to wax your body. OK, this is not good. This is not the business. You don't look cute. OK, this is disgusting to me. And I'm not saying anything about your sexuality. I'm just talking about the visual picture of what I see in front of me right now. Is making me about to lose my lunch. OK, let's keep going. Well, a couple more pictures and then I'm just going to wrap it up because I, I can't go back to that interview and continue on. <clears throat> Y'all, I posted this the other day on my Instagram story, and I was like, what kind of edge cream are you using to get that S pattern on your chest, Alok? Because look at this. This is crazy. Not a boy, not a girl, just me. You look like the woolly mammoth, okay? You need a good wax, and you really just need to lay off the makeup is what I think, Alok. Oh, Lord. Alok is lost. Alok ain't awoke, okay? He is not. I mean, who is the Like, this is crazy. This is crazy. Like, his chest hair, y'all. Let me just. Can I make this bigger? Hold on. Let me just see if I can put this as the main. Okay, I don't know if I can make this much bigger, but look at this. This is chest hair. What? That's crazy. That is crazy. Okay, let me go back. Oops. Okay. I I don't know. And you know, it's like it's aside from like a few really well-known um trans actors like um Laverne Cox, I believe is a is a trans actor. At least Laverne keeps it classy. You know what I mean? And even Caitlyn Jenner, like, I mean, it's disgusting because we all know what Bruce used to look like and he doesn't make a great looking woman. But why is it that when these people start to go this route, it's like they've got to go over the edge. It's like they've got to put it in your face that they're trans or that they're a cross dresser or that they're, you know, homosexual. This is the thing about, why why people really push against this because when i'm walking down the street okay and let's say i've got my little kid in my hand and then you know here comes a loke in this outfit or i'm at the gym here he is on a on a spin cycle here's a loke and i got to explain to my kid what the hell this is like this this is crazy to me like why can't he just have on like a jeans and t-shirt no woman dresses like this on a regular basis. Like a real woman doesn't dress like this on the regular. Like this is crazy. Anyways, if you guys want to go check this page out, like I said, his name is Alok V Menon on Instagram. If you want to check that out, but I'm going to end this video here. I know I said this was going to be a full reaction video, but I just can't continue on with this. It's ridiculous to me. Demi, I hope that you get some help, girl. Like, who knows what's going to be next? Because she has now taken this further and further and further. And I'm really concerned for her. I haven't heard from her parents. I haven't heard from her family on how they feel. I'm sure they're like backing her because what else are they going to do? She probably pays their mortgage and all their bills. So they have to go along with it. But I don't know. I just think that this is a little bit overboard. And I kind of feel like, you know, us making this something that, that people can watch and kids can watch is a little bit dangerous to our society. But anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments box below. Watch the whole interview. I will link it below in this video so that you can check it out. 
and let me know what you think about it. I'm curious to know what you guys think about this and what you think about the slippery slope that Demi Lovato is heading down. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget this to give this video a like. Don't forget to share this video. And please don't forget to come back to the channel for another video because I'm actually about to film another video that you guys are going to like. So thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.